Hello everyone and welcome to Mad Knitting. My name is Susan. My pronouns are she, her, hers, and you can find me online as Madtown Mama on Ravelry and Madtown underscore Mama on Instagram. Today is Thursday, November 7, 2024. So it's two days after the election. It's awful. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I don't want to dwell on it for this episode because, you know, I don't know when you're watching this um, or how you feel about it or what we've learned in the time since I record and since, you know, this goes up and you're watching. Um, but I am feeling a lot of sadness and grief and anger and discouragement. Um, and not even ready to think about what we do next or where we go from here. Um, I know there's a lot of calls to organize and fight and I just, I'm not ready for that yet. Um, so it's, it's been a lot. Um, I will say though that Tuesday night I got very little sleep. So yesterday was awfully rough. I felt terrible. I couldn't focus. I didn't know what to do. I did get a little more sleep last night, so I'm feeling a little better today. Um, and I purposefully kept my work calendar pretty clear this week, knowing that things might be pretty unstable with the election. Um, one of the surprises was that the results were in so quickly. So, you know, at least we know. Um, but in the meantime, I don't really have enough to keep me busy at work right now, although next week is packed. Um, and that just kind of feeds my like agitation and anxiety. So I am taking a little bit of time to film an episode. Um, I do have some knitting to share. It's not a whole lot because I've been busy and it's only been a couple of weeks since my last video, but here we are. Um, okay, so I have two finished objects, a few socks in progress. That's all I've got for works in progress to show you. Um, and I will share just a little of what I've been reading. So my first finished object I am wearing, um, I'd hoped to get this done for Halloween and I think it was maybe the next day I finally got all the ends woven in and had it ready to go. But I am so, so happy with how this turned out. Um, even though it wasn't quite done on Halloween, I wore it for just a little bit when we were handing out candy to the handful of trick-or-treaters that came by. Um, here in Madison, where I live, it was it got really windy and pretty cold on Halloween, like through the afternoon. So there were not very many kids out um, and I had a lot of candy left, but anyway. So I was wearing this and I was still picking up stitches on the second armhole. So I had needles sticking out and I had this like ball of yarn I had to keep shoving in my pocket. So that was my costume, I guess. But this is called the Lighthearted Slipover. It's a pattern by Clara Eggers. She has an adult and child's version. I love it. The original version is like just hearts, but then she has a second set of charts you can use if you want to do this trick or treat version. So I don't know if you can tell, but down at the bottom, these are ghosts. And then of course there are hearts and skulls, which is very fun. And I plan to wear it all seasons. I made it in black and white to use up yarn from my stash and because that seemed appropriate for Halloween and it's got a little bit of a Wednesday Adams vibe. I know most of her stuff is like checkered, but color wise, color theme wise, it goes along with that. Um, so yeah, I, you probably can't see it very well because I have a black t-shirt on, but there's a scoop neck. The neckline is folded over. Um, and then the armholes are just, they're not folded over. It's just like a regular three by three, pick up stitches and do three by three rib. Um, it's a great pattern. My row gauge, I think must have been different from hers because I had to like rip back and start the neck shaping for the front earlier than she indicated. So I think I was doing this while I was finishing up the decreases along the arm edge, the armhole edge. 
Um, but that wasn't really a big deal. It was easy enough to fix and I'm really, really happy with how this turned out. Um, I don't have yarn or labels to show you because I pretty much used up what I had. This is from Stash, so I was using up leftovers. Um, the white color, I'm pretty sure is Cascade 220. So I used that for this contrast. Um, the dark charcoal gray that's in the main body and for most of the color work is from Webb's Valley Yarns Northampton. And it's a deep charcoal gray. You can see maybe a little bit that it's kind of heathered. I would have liked to use this for the whole thing, but I didn't think I would have enough. And I think I'm right because what's, what's left is like this tiny walnut shaped ball. So to stretch that out, I use some knit picks in a more of a medium gray for part of this color work, but I think it works pretty well. Um, and I like that it's different shades of gray rather than something with a lot more contrast. So I'm really happy with how this turned out and I've worn it a couple of times and yeah, I used size seven needles for the color work and size six for the main part of the stockinette. My other finished object, um, I had started last time, another kind of spooky themed knit. This is called Boneyard Sweethearts by Stephanie Letvin. She's also known as Telly Bean Knits. Um, and it's a gift, I explained this last time, it's a gift for um, someone we stayed with when we were in Minnesota last month visiting my son at college. Um, we stayed with this lovely woman who's the family member of a friend who loves to host people and it saved us a bundle on paying for a hotel. Um, and she saw another hat that I had made from the same pattern and asked if I would make one for her daughter. So I did and I'm very happy with how it turned out. I was a little afraid it would be too small. She mentioned that her daughter's head is a little bit bigger. Um, so I tried to accommodate that. And I think with the blocking and everything, it's turned out just the right size but it's such a fun pattern. This again has, like the vest I'm wearing, it has an alternate set of charts. So you can either, that you've got the skeletons holding hands and then in between, you can choose either hearts like I did or ghosts. There's a ghost motif. The yarn I used is um, Knit Circus. I'm trying to remember the name of this color. I mean, it's, it's black. It's a very almost solid black color. It, I think it's something Raven related, like maybe Quoth the Raven or something like that. I had bought a whole bunch of it to make a sweater intending to do color work before I decided I don't like knitting color work sweaters for myself out of superwash yarn. Um, but for a hat that's a gift for someone, it was fine. And then the white is just some Cascade heritage I had left over from another project. So it's true that I don't love knitting color work with superwash yarn because um, it's kind of slippery. It doesn't, you know, the, the, the fibers don't cling to each other in this lovely way that you want for color work. But for fingering weight yarn, I was using size two needles for the color work. So it was fairly tight gauge. Um, and that, that worked out a little better. I also use the ladder jack back jacquard technique anytime I have floats longer than five stitches, even if it's just for one row. So I think it came out looking pretty neat. Some of them are still kind of showing through on the other side, and I'm not sure that I can fix that, but I think it looks pretty good. Um, because my gauge was tighter than the pattern calls for, the pattern does call for fingering weight yarn, but it, the gauge is seven stitches to the inch, which I think was gonna to be too loose for this yarn because it is pretty fine weight. Um, I cast on and stitches for the largest size plus a whole extra repeat. So that was a whole extra 16 stitches um, and it turned out just right. So happy with this. Um, a little late for the season, but that's okay. I think her, she asked for it because her daughter apparently used to work actually in a restoration cemetery and is really into skeletons and uh, that kind of thing. So 
I assume that it will be appropriate all year round. So those are the only two things that I have finished, but I do have a few works in progress. Um, I have a couple sweaters in progress that are kind of on hold because I'm working on some gift knitting now. Um, and right now, all I have to show you is socks. So this will probably be quick because, you know, some of them you've seen before. So the same lovely person who hosted us, I said I would make a hat for her daughter and I thought I should send her a pair of socks as well. So this is still the first sock, but it's almost done. In fact, I think I need to check the length and decide when to start decreasing for the toe. Um, she's kind of a petite person, so I think her feet are a little bit smaller than mine, so I'll have to use kind of make my best guess as to sizing. Um, I really like the color of this yarn and how it's knitting up in socks. Here it is wound up in this game. This is also from Webs. Um, Webs, they've sold out to this large like corporate craft company. Um, and not that you should never buy yarn from large companies, because I certainly do. Um, but I've heard the customer service has sort of gone downhill and you know, I have enough yarn, so I think I'm just never, I'm probably never going to buy from them again. Um, regardless, I got this a couple years ago and I like what I've used so far. Anyway, this is their house brand of sock yarn. It's called Huntington Splash. The brand is Valley Yarns. I'm not sure what this color is called, but you can see it's a light gray and the streaks in it are darker gray. And sometimes there's like this really nice cranberry red color. So for the socks, I just use size one needles. I always work cuff to toe. I cast on 64 stitches. For this pair, I'm working in plain stockinette because it goes pretty fast. I have an eye of partridge heel. So the slip stitches are, I use slip stitches and I kind of alternate. It's like slip one, knit one, slip one, knit one. And then the next time I'm on the right side, it's knit one, slip one, knit one, slip one. So they're alternating. And yeah, that's how I do these. Out. I do a lot of socks this way. So if you are a repeat viewer, all of that will be very familiar. And you know, sock knitting for me is comfort knitting. Um, it's like comfort food, you know, it's the mac and cheese of knitting. I have a lot of sock patterns and they're all lovely and I admire a lot of sock patterns, but when it comes down to it, there's about like two or three different things that I actually do whenever I start a pair of socks. And I think for me, it's comforting, it's easy, it's portable, it's what I come back to when everything else is really challenging, you know? And I mean that in many ways, you know, sometimes life is challenging for different reasons, you know, emotionally or just intellectually or, <clears throat> you know, just cause things are busy, it can just be that. And I just need something that that's easy, that's not so challenging. Sometimes I do need challenge, but anyway. So the second pair of socks, um, pretty similar to what I just showed you. And I've started, had started these last time, but I just finished up the first one, so. Um, this is again, Valley Yarns Huntington Splash, different colorway. This one's a medium gray with lighter streaks of blue and cream, which remind me of the sky, but I don't think that's what this colorway is called. I think for Huntington Splash, I think all of their colorways are named after bodies of water, like Pacific something, and there's a River Thames, and I, like, I don't remember what these are specifically, but anyway. So these are also a gift for a friend um, who has kind of big feet. So they're longer, much longer than would fit me. For this pair, I cast on 70 stitches and I did a one by one cuff and then continued in a garter rib because I like how that fits and feels over the leg. Um, slip stitch heel, this time I didn't do eye of partridge, I kept the column of knit stitches flowing into the columns of slip stitches. And 
As I continue down the top of the foot, I keep the garter rib on the top of the foot and just do plain stock in it for the bottom. So there we go. That's the first sock. I have started the second. Um, got a lot done during a meeting today. It wasn't really a meeting. It was, <laughs> so this was so nice. Someone um, in a larger network that I work with uh, set up a Zoom meeting as a post, as a space for people to meet post-election and just kind of process a little bit. You know, there was no strategizing or arguing. It was just more like, how are you feeling? What questions do you have? And it was, it was good. I didn't want to go, but then I was glad that I went. So I got a lot of this done during that. Um, but yeah, second sock will be same as the first. I keep these stitch markers in here, by the way, <laughs> just to keep track of how many rounds that I've done um, so that I don't have to go all the way back to the beginning and count every time. And it also uh, helps make sure that both socks are exactly the same size. I get questions about these. Sometimes people think they're here for decoration. Um, I mean, I do kind of like the way the colors go together, but it's just for, um, they're just temporary for construction purposes. So anyway, second sock. I'm hoping to finish it soon and send it to my friend. Um, because I think she would like them. Do I see a mistake here? No, it's not a mistake. My third work in progress is another pair of socks. <laughs> Pretty much the same as I've been doing. Um, this is Utopia Wisco Sock. Um, Utopia is one of my very favorite Wisconsin-based um, yarn companies. They have a mill. They also dye like commercial bases. So this is a commercial base. It's a really nice like merino nylon base. And this is a special colorway that she dyed up over the summer and sold at the Wisconsin Sheep and Wool Festival called Kamala Nominon. So it's a Kamala Harris themed color, um, kind of a play on the Feminomenon song by Chapel Rowan. Um, and I was so joyful when I bought it. They donated half of the profits to the Harris Walls campaign at the time. Um, and I saved this skein to cast on during election day, which I did. I was working on this in the evening as we were watching results come in. So it's pretty bittersweet, honestly, because this is such a bright, vibrant, joyful color. I feel like Kamala Harris is a vibrant, joyful person. Um, however you feel about her politics, I think you can't deny that, that she really does exude that. Um, and so it's a little sad working on these, but anyway, um, for these I cast on, these are size one needles and I've cast on 66 stitches and I am doing that same idea that I showed you with that last pair of one by one rib for the cuff and continuing a garter rib as I go down the leg. I don't know if I will keep these. I'm making them to fit me. Um, I don't have an intended recipient in mind just now, but um, for now, anyway, they will fit my foot unless I get part way through and decide otherwise. But so those are my works in progress that I can show you. Like I said, I have a couple sweaters that I've made no progress on, so there's no point in bringing them. I have another project that is, um, I'm going to keep it under wraps until I'm able to send it off to the person who is receiving it. Um, and I have a lot of ideas floating around in my head for gift knits and holiday knits, but I just haven't really settled on anything. I need to soon because here we are in November. Christmas is six weeks away that we do celebrate that holiday. Um, and I'm thinking about, you know, family and whoever I might want to make something for and just haven't decided. So that's it for knitting, I'm afraid. I do have a little bit of reading to share um, just because. So 
maybe last week, I saw a news story that a brand new piece has been discovered by the composer Frederick Chopin. So Frederick Chopin lived, um, he died young. I think he died of tuberculosis, but he lived in the early half of the 19th century. He was Polish, lived much of his adult, adult life in France and um, pianists absolutely love Chopin because he wrote almost exclusively for piano. Um, almost all of his pieces are for piano solo. So he wrote many, many mazurkas, which is a Polish dance, waltzes, which of course is a dance, polonaises, which is another Polish dance. Um, he wrote beautiful nocturnes. He wrote beautiful etudes, um, scherzos. I know there's a piano sonata, but those short pieces, those waltzes and mazurkas and polonaises and are really, really the, the treasures of his output. So last week, I guess in the basement, maybe it was the library of Congress, some library, um, I don't know if they were putting stuff away, but somebody found like this little note card sized manuscript that looked like it was a piece of his and after whatever testing and verification they go through they did confirm that this was his writing his original work and it was a piece that was not known that was not cataloged um, it's very short uh, the new york times published a short video of the concert pianist Lang Lang playing it. It's a beautiful little piece and I'm I'm sure it'll be published somewhere and I would I would love to get my hands on it. So that was like this lovely little bright spot. You know, we're always discovering new things even when we think we have everything by a great artist. So um, I actually posted about that on Instagram and then um, my cousin's husband sent me a note and said, hey, did you know about this book? It's about a Polish pianist who specializes in Chopin. I mean, it's just a novel. So I got it at the library. It's called The Pole. It's by Jam Kutsia. Um, Jam Kutsia is a South African writer. He lives in Australia now. He won the Nobel Prize like 20 years ago. And I've read three or four of his books by now and they're excellent. Um, really compelling, not very long, um, but just sort of original and compelling. And you find yourself drawn into these characters and, you know, living rather ordinary lives. And they're not like bad people, but they're not always like great people. Um, it's kind of hard to explain. But this one, as you can tell from the cover, there's piano keys. It's called The Pole because one of the main characters is a Polish pianist whose last name is so long and so full of C's and Z's that it's hard to pronounce. So that's how he's referred to in the book. Um, and then the other main character is a Spanish woman named Beatriz who has invited him to a concert series in Barcelona. Um, it's good. And it was a short read. I feel like I need to read. So this is based off of Dante, a work by Dante. Is it Dante's Inferno? I don't know. I haven't read it. Um, and here it says reinventing the all encompassing love of the poet Dante for his Beatrice. Kutsia exposes the fundamentally enigmatic nature of romance, etc., etc. So I think I need to go read that to understand this better because um, what happens is this woman, Beatriz, meets the pianist. He's at least 20 years older than she is. He's in his 70s and he like becomes infatuated with her and keeps writing to her. And she she's like very cold. She doesn't really feel the same way about him. And, you know, she's just like she's never, she never really returns his feelings, but she's very curious about him. And so it just, it chronicles this whole thing. Um, anyway, I keep thinking about it and that's a sign that it's a good book. So that is something I've been reading. I've also been reading this memoir that just came out. It's called Praise Song for the Kitchen Ghosts and it's by the writer Crystal Wilkinson. Just came out this year. Um, and I, I didn't know about it until I saw a post online about the 
book festival in Wisconsin in September and that this author was going to be here. And of course, I recognized her right away. Crystal Wilkinson is a Kentucky writer. She, here's her picture. She was the, along with my library receipt. Um, she was the Kentucky Poet Laureate from 2021 to 2023. And she just had this book that came out. It's stories and recipes um, and like little fictional vignettes. I mean, she's a poet and she's written a novel um, and short stories. I have a book of short stories by her called Blackberries, Blackberries. Um, so it's just, a, and beautiful pictures and photographs. Um, and it's a lot about her, her family history and how she learned to cook and there's recipes in there. Um, so <laughs> I know I'm rambling, but I, I don't really know Crystal, but I have met her. Um, I've, you know, been in her presence because for a time she was on the faculty for a summer arts program for high school students. I attended when I was a teenager. It's a like a residential thing. Um, and it was actually funded by the state government of Kentucky. So you could attend for free. Um, so when I went, it was three weeks long. Um, I'm not sure if it's the same length now, but they would have, you could go for music, which is how I went, drama, creative writing, theater, visual art, they may have added some categories since I was there, um, but it was really incredible. It was the first time in my life that I had been immersed in an environment with other people who were there for the arts, who were there to create art and music, um, and who were all kind of quirky and weird like I was. And we were from all parts of the state. So there were like people from the mountains of Kentucky and then people from like the big cities, you know, there were these magnet schools in Louisville and Lexington where they always had a lot of kids that, got into this program. Um, but it was, it was incredible and it was life changing. And it was when I decided that I wanted to try to make a career doing that. Um, anyway, she was on the writing faculty when I came back to that same arts program to work as a counselor for a couple of summers. So she and I didn't interact a whole lot because I was a counselor and I wasn't, you know, in there for, had never been there for creative writing. But I remember her and I, you know, when her book of short stories came out, I went to a reading and had it signed and stuff. So it was just really exciting when I saw that she had this new book out and that she was going to come to Wisconsin. Um, I couldn't go because I was traveling for work. But anyway, it's a beautiful, beautiful book. Um, I think I might just have to buy a copy so that I can have it and keep referring to it and maybe try out some of the recipes. Um, the last thing I want to say is that she wrote this because her family lived in Appalachia for at least five generations, five or six generations, going back to her fifth great grandmother. So like great, 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 great grandmother who was owned by a man um, in the mountains, like in Appalachia. And this, um, her name was Aggie. She, she married this guy. Um, so first he owned her and then he married her. Um, and she knows a little bit of this history because there is a record like when, when this man died, she was left his land. Um, and then she, I think one of her children bought the freedom of her husband too. I mean, there's a whole history there of black people in Appalachia that we, well, we don't really know about. We tend to overlook because what we, um, when we think about that history, usually people have in mind plantations of the deep south. And um, there's this other history too that is much less known. And there's a whole group of um, Appala black Appalachian poets that call themselves Afrolatcha. And um, it's fascinating and beautiful and heartbreaking and, um, I've really, really loved reading it um, and feeling, you know, even though I'm not like deeply connected to that place, I grew up in a different part of Kentucky um, and I'm not deeply connected to her. It's very cool to be connected to this in some way. Um, and the last thing I will say just generally about now and the moment we're in, it's so hard. 
it is so hard and like the worst is coming. Um, but there is something about looking at history, at looking at other difficult moments in history. And that doesn't make this easier, but it's a reminder that as humans, we've gone through it before. And one of the best things we can do in these moments is create great art and care for each other. And I think that's what a lot of us are trying to do right now. So with that, I'm going to wrap it up. I will see you next time with more knitting. Bye-bye.